Hi, can you help me with my phone? Of course, I can help you with your phone. What's going on with it? It won't charge. Got it. Let's troubleshoot this. Have you tried using a different charging cable or power adapter? All right, there we go. It works perfectly. Today, I'm going to create a custom GPT to answer all of my parents' tech questions. They call me all the time to help them with their phone, with their TV, with their internet. And a lot of their issues are pretty basic. And of course, I love to help them, but I thought it would be funny to use AI to my advantage to answer some of those initial questions. So that's what I'm gonna be doing today. I'm gonna show you how to do it. We're gonna be using custom GPTs and we're also gonna be using BotPress to be able to publish that GPT anywhere. And BotPress is the sponsor of today's video. So. Let's go. So you're gonna need two things today. You're gonna need a ChatGPT Plus account because that's the only way to create custom GPTs. And you're also gonna need a BotPress account. And BotPress is free to start playing around with. And through BotPress, we're also gonna need their Deploy GPT Chrome extension. And I'll show you how to set all of this up. So let's start with ChatGPT. If you don't already have a ChatGPT Plus account, you will need to get one. I think it's 20 bucks a month and it's really, really worthwhile. And the first thing you're gonna do is just go to chat.openai.com and up in the top left corner, you see this little explore button. Once you click that, you're gonna be dropped into the My GPTs page. And right here, it says create a GPT. So click that. And I've already made a full video about how to use custom GPTs. So if you haven't seen it, go watch it. But I'm gonna walk through it again right now. So on the left side, we're gonna get started by telling it what we wanna build. Let's start with this. I wanna make a GPT that answers my parents' tech questions. You will be very friendly and supportive tech support chat but that only provides the most simple possible answers, even to difficult questions. You should expect to get poorly described questions and problems, and you should ask follow-up questions if something is not clear. Let's start with that. All right, so now it's updating GPT. Great choice, how about we name this GPT Friendly Tech Pal? Does that name work? No, I want them to think it's me. No, name it Matt Berman and pretend to be me, Matt Berman. Okay, now let's create a profile picture for Matt Berman. Okay, that's pretty good actually, it has the hoodie on it, everything. Fantastic. Now let's refine the behavior of Matt Berman to ensure it aligns perfectly with your vision. First, in terms of the role and goal, Matt Berman is designed to be a friendly and supportive tech support chatbot. To enhance this, what type of personality traits or specific behaviors would you like to see in Matt Berman? Should it use humor, be strictly professional, or show empathy? Okay, interesting. It printed the same thing twice, so maybe that's a little bug with GPTs, but that's okay. Let's keep going. You should be friendly and show empathy. Keep it informal and casual and explain things in the most simple way possible. The user of this chatbot will not be very knowledgeable about tech topics. And the cool thing about using BotPress to deploy your GPT is you can literally put it anywhere. You can put it directly on your website. You can have a Telegram bot, a Slack bot, a Facebook Messenger bot. It really allows you to take your GPT and deploy it anywhere. Okay, that's a great approach for Matt Berman. Now let's think about any specific boundaries or limits. Are there any types of questions or topics that Matt Berman should not attend? to answer. For example, should it avoid giving financial advice? Yes, only answer tech support questions, nothing else. All of the interactions should be about solving problems with technical devices like iPhones, TVs, and computers. Great. Now in terms of guidelines for interaction, how should Matt Berman handle situations where the user's question is unclear or when the user seems frustrated? For instance, should it ask for specific details, offer to look up additional information, or suggest alternative solutions? Yes, you should always ask follow-up questions if you cannot provide a simple and useful tech support solution to a problem. You can look things up also. If the user seems to be getting frustrated or you don't know how to solve a problem, admit you are just an AI and that they should call the real Matt Berman and reiterate that he loves them very much. The only users will be either my mom or dad. So ask who it is and then address them by mom or dad. All right, now we get to test it out. All right, I keep getting a loading screen when trying to watch my show. How do I fix it? Hi there, may I know who I'm speaking with? Regarding the issue with the loading screen, it sounds like you're experiencing a streaming problem. Okay, this seems too formal even. Let me get it to be a little bit less formal. So I'm just gonna type, you should be less formal in your responses. Let's see how it does. Let's try it again. I'm just gonna use one of these suggested ones. Why isn't my phone charging properly? Okay, this is looking better, but it's still just a little bit too formal, a little bit too well-structured. I want it to seem as though I'm actually typing back to them. So let's try to fix this. So make it seem like there's a human on the other side. Don't worry about perfect punctuation or capitalization. Keep the formatting to a minimum. Use emojis when it makes sense. Okay, let's try it again. Why isn't my phone charging properly? 
Hmm, that's annoying. A few things could be causing it. First, check your charging cable and wall adapter. Sometimes they get damaged or just, oh, this is perfect, yes. So this looks like a message that I might send them. Let's go back and forth a few more times just to make sure it looks good. There's no lint in my phone and I don't have another charger to try. It doesn't charge at all. Okay, so it looks like it's going back to the more formal responses, so that's weird. So I'm gonna tell it one more time not to do that. All right, make sure to keep it as informal as possible with all responses. Do not use bullet points or other formatting. All messages should seem like they are written like a text message. Okay, why isn't my phone charging properly? Let's try that again. All right, now it's not even using capitalization. This is perfect. I checked everything, still not working. All right, no worries. We've got more tricks up our sleeves. It looks like another charger worked. Great to hear another charger work that pretty much narrows it down to the old charger or cable being the issue. You might need to get a new one. Just a tip, try to go for a charger from a reputable brand. They tend to be more reliable. Okay, this is great. So I'm very happy with this. We're gonna now go over to the configure tab. So we don't need image generation, so I'm gonna turn that off and I'm gonna leave web browsing on just in case the GPT needs to go look something up. And I'm not gonna do any actions either. So I actually think we're pretty good to go. So I'm gonna click save in the top right and I'm gonna to allow access to public. So I got that URL right there. Okay, but that's not where we wanna end it. I wanna be able to plug this into different places, whether it's Slack or Telegram or Facebook Messenger. So next, hop on over to botpress.com and if you don't already have an account, go ahead and sign up. It's super easy and free. And BotPress is a really sophisticated platform that allows you to create chatbots really easily. And you can give it a ton of functionality. It's really awesome. I highly recommend checking it out. I'm not even scratching the surface of the functionality available. Okay, so once you sign up for BotPress, this is what the dashboard looks like please play around with it. Then you're also gonna wanna install their Chrome extension that allows you to deploy these GPTs. I'll drop the link to that in the description below. Once you do that, this is what the Chrome extension is gonna look like right here. So the first thing you need to do, create or log into an OpenAI developer account. So you just click this little link button and here we are. Then we have to create an OpenAI API key. And if you've watched any of my videos, you know how to do this, but we'll do it together. Click the link right here. I'm gonna click create new secret key and I'm gonna call it Mapbot. And I am going to revoke this key before publishing the video. So click copy right there. And then I just copy and paste my API key right there and click next. Next, we're going to have to create a BotPress personal access token and paste it in here. Okay, now that I'm logged in, I click right here. We're going to click create personal access token. And there we are. So we just click generate new token, and I'm gonna say this is for the map bot, and then generate token. I'm gonna save it, then I'm gonna go back to the Chrome extension, and I'm gonna paste it in right there. Click next. So it says no valid GPT detected, and this is as expected. This Chrome extension only works when you're on your own GPT page. Let me show you. So I'm back at the Matt bot, Matt Berman, and I'm gonna click the Chrome extension, and now it's loading. So it says select a bot press workspace, default, and it's building the bot. This takes just a few seconds. Okay, done. So right from here, you can immediately talk to your bot. Let's see what that looks like. So I click it and you can see the URL is actually bot press. So now this custom GPT is living outside of chat GPT. And as you can see, you can deploy this to your own website. So if you have a business and you wanna deploy a custom GPT to it, it's that easy. So I'll just say, help me with my iPhone just to make sure it works. Perfect, what's going on with your iPhone? But Today, I wanna to add it to other messaging channels. So I'm gonna to go to configure, and these are all the integrations that come with BotPress, and they have a ton. But my family and I, we use Telegram. So let's see, and there it is. Okay, so let's click install into the default workspace, and which bot? I wanna use the Matt Berman bot. All right, done, successful. Go to bot, and there's the webhook URL. So we're gonna enable the integration. Okay, so it looks like we're gonna to have to use this thing called Botfather, which is an official Telegram integration. So we go to telegram.me slash botfather. Then from there, we open Telegram and we click start. So we create a new bot, so slash new bot. What are we gonna call it? Matt Berman. Okay, so it needs to say Matt Berman bot. Done, congratulations on your new bot. Use this token. So there we go. So now it gives us a token and we're gonna grab that token. Now back to bot 
press right here where it says bot token, I'm just gonna paste it in and then click save configuration. And I think that should be it actually. All right, so let's open up the bot, let's try it out. Hi, can you help me with my phone? Of course I can help you with your phone, what's going on with it? It won't charge. Got it, let's troubleshoot this. Have you tried using a different charging cable or power adapter? No, I haven't. All right, there we go, it works perfectly. So now I'm gonna put this bot into my family channel and let them talk directly to it as their technical support. How cool is this? Now, of course, as mentioned, you can add a ton of additional functionality with BotPress, so check them out. If you liked this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.